Hey everybody, I'm Farbzilla. I run Hydro Thunder Hurricane. Uh, it's a, a boat racing game if uh, anybody is unaware. Uh, this is the Xbox 360 version. There is a older version that was on like arcade and N64 and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is the 360 version. Uh, category I'm racing includes the DLC tracks. Um, there is another category that takes them out. It's only three tracks, but on this one we get to uh, see all the tracks in the game. The boat that I use is Rad Hazard. Uh, it's the fastest boat, uh, mainly because of the air control, but it is pretty good on the water too. Um, one mechanic that you'll see me use a lot is uh, when I'm in the air, you'll see the boat turning 45 degrees, and that's because it helps me gain speed. Um, you do, don't want to boost when you're doing that, but uh, that's just something that you'll see me hopping around and stuff, so that's just a quick explanation of that. Um, I'm ready to go though, so I'll give you the countdown. Three, two, one. Um, Atlantis is a DLC track, and what they did with the DLC tracks is they made the water a little more of a factor. Um, harder to keep your speed um, but as far as mechanics go besides the um, air turn that I was talking about you do you can catch boats in front of you by drafting them like I am right now um, the game is also really physically sound so like if you're going downhill oops if you're going downhill on the water that will also help you gain speed. Um, you can also stack, I guess you could say, the different mechanics in order to gain speed more. Um, so like, you know, going downhill in a draft is really fast. There's actually a mechanic that I'm doing right here um, that's really subtle, but it's actually really fast. And if you want to be a top level player in this game, um, you know, it's a you, you do a mix of all the different mechanics basically all the time. Um, the one mechanic that I was talking about though is called skiing, and basically what you do is you catch your own draft, and it accelerates you on the water to 200 miles an hour, um, where you normally only can get up to like 180. And a lot of the times, what you do, like right here when I'm coming out of this little shortcut. I ski and then I jump and um, you know normally that jump you're starting at 180 but if you're able to ski you get to 200 on the water so you're jumping at 200 um, so it's it's really fast that way um, <clears throat> with the ski actually there's, there's So I guess I don't really know what to do if the sound died. Audio is kill. Okay, sounds like it's fixed now. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I was explaining the skiing mechanic, and it's basically just a way to stay fast on the water. And I gotta do this slow because I missed the boost. Oop. That sucked. Um, I guess it'll give me a little more time to explain the ski. Uh, you start on the water and you turn at a 45 degree angle while boosting and it puts you at 200. Um, and you can also jump and land on the water already going 200 miles an hour with your boat angled at the 45 degrees and it allows you to go again 200 on the water um, 
Because generally, if you're boosting and it's flat, uh, water, the fastest you can go, oh, that sucked too, is 180. Um, so anytime you're able to ski, it's way faster than normal. Uh, most of the time you can ski is around corners and stuff, so you're like, you know, on a corner that you might have to slow down to take normally at like 160, 170, you can now do it at 200, so that's a huge difference there. Um, some other mechanics that are a little more subtle too is, uh, now, I was kind of talking before how the games physically sound and all of that. Um, you can use the backside of pretty much any wave to give you a little push forward. Um, there's a really good example of it at the end of this track, actually, so I'll try to I'll point that out when I'm about to do it and hopefully I can uh, manage it. Um, but yeah, to be really fast in this game, um, you know, just like any other racing game out there, what it comes down to isn't necessarily how fast you can get your boat going, it's how long you can keep your boat going that fast. And the way you do that is with all the different mechanics, um, you know, you're using at your disposal basically every second of the track. So whether it's... You know, jumping like I'm doing right now, or skiing around a corner, or using a draft like that. Um, you know, there's just a different combination of <clears throat> a lot of different things you can do. Um, there is a little bit of RNG on every track, and that comes from the boats. Um, the best way that I can explain it is that it's relative to your position on the track. And your time on the track, I had to brake really hard there. Um, I don't have enough boost. So here's this jump coming up. I'll finish what I'm saying too. If I bounce right on the water here, I get to straight to 240, which I came pretty close. And I'm able to hold it till the end of the track here. Um, but getting back to the boats, they spawn based on your location on the track at a certain time on how fast you're going and where the game thinks you're going. Um, a lot of the times, I feel like it tries to reward you for being really fast. Um, other try other times, it's like if you go too fast, sometimes it's in the way. Um, so I don't know, it, it kind of varies. And the way the boats are programmed is once they're in a certain pattern, they will be in that pattern, but they do have a hint of RNG mixed in there, and they will do random things like veer off and crash. Um, some will even be kind of vindictive towards you and try to mess you up if you get real close to them, so there's that. Um, another good wave bounce is coming up right here, so hopefully I don't mess it up, but it's through this little shortcut right here. Yeah, that was a good one. I got to 240 right away. Um, coming up around this next corner is actually the biggest shortcut in the game. I'm really inconsistent at it though. Um, the bounce off that ramp I missed all above where I just. at anyway. Um, that was close. Is that there are some glitches that you can do um, on like four or five of the tracks. Uh, two of them are reset glitches where you, um, you know, if you crash in a race you're able to reset your boat. And it's using that button to do it. Um, some of the other ones are out of bounds glitches. For right now, um, I'm really the only one that's running this. I'm the fastest person that has decided to run this, and uh, the reason I don't really do any of the glitches right now is because there's not a separate category for it, so if I have to choose between a glitchless run and a glitched run, I'm gonna go glitchless just because I want to push myself in that manner, I guess. Um, 
But this is Bermuda Triangle. It's probably the coolest looking track. Uh, it's definitely one of the harder tracks to stay really fast on. That's because the waves are so volatile. Um, there's actually a cool part coming up here that I'm going to try to not botch. But you just can go super fast for a really long time. And it's kind of a cool entry here. So I'll see if I get it, but it's into this portal. Yeah, there we go. Now, uh, I'm going 240 basically. And the way that I bounce off the water here... Oh, okay, well, I did it okay. But you can actually do it where you don't lose any speed. And you can keep all that speed to this section. I gotta grab this boost. So that had to slow me down a little bit, but... I needed the boost. So yeah, sometimes this game does look kind of like a flying simulator more than a uh, oh, racer. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. Um, I uh, I used to hold individual track world records back in the day. I took a long break, and finding speed running actually got me back into this game. So. I'm actually very thankful for that because this game is amazing awesome. yeah no I, I agree that glitchless does take more skill and it definitely does depend on the game um, for me in racers you know unless you're talking like some of the shit that the guys do and in, in like Mario Kart and all of that a lot of the a lot of the glitches and racers don't really uh, add anything to the, the game it kind of takes away from it you know, because it's just like finagling yourself to get out of bounds somewhere, or like I was talking about before, um, with the reset glitches, you basically turn around on the track and reset at a certain point and it puts you forward on the track, so it's like, you know, even visually it's not that cool to do. <laughs> um, Monster Island's actually kind of a cool track, it's the only lab track that the track actually changes. Every lap's a little different, which, you know, for sake of monotony is pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, there's not actually a lot to this track. I guess I missed to, um, another part of the water physics. It doesn't really show up a lot in the game, uh, but there are whirl whirlpools that if you enter them right, you can launch yourself out of pretty fast. Um, there's a there's one on the third lap of this track. So I almost forgot what lap I was on there. <laughs> um So yeah, like, kinda like what I was saying before too. Um I'm actually not the fastest in the world at this game. Um I am the fastest though that decided to speedrun it. Um, a little disclaimer, I guess. I'm saying I'm not the fastest in the world, um, but if I had to guess and like average everybody out on the leaderboard, I'm probably seventh right now. Um, I've been playing again for about six months or so, and uh, this time around, before I wasn't really privy to the whole skiing thing, and that actually totally changes the game up because it's another like that skill ski that I was talking about, it, uh, I was trying to shoot myself down, but there's that whirlpool again. That one was kind of bad. I got a bad ramp bounce. Um, and I also forgot what I was saying, because I remembered about the whirlpool right away. <laughs> oh yeah, just the difference between like being aware of the skiing and everything. Um, before, there were places that it was happen happening naturally, but it wasn't really abused in a manner that, you know, you're adding it in different places and forcing it to ski, you know. Um, so where I'm at right now is I've got skiing down fairly decently, and I'm basically just looking for new places to use it in different you know, basically just different routes and all of that stuff. So, um, Area 51 is another really cool looking track. 
There's actually a lot to it too. There's a lot of different sections that vary. So it's kind of it's pretty engaging as a as a level. It's one of the better ones too. Uh, we also use in-game time too to time it. I found that the load times will vary. So there's that also. Hopefully I can do this track fairly decently, because at the end it's pretty sweet if you go really fast, but it's really hard to do. It just... you just get going and you hold your speed for a really long time. Oops. Well, it's supposed to start right there, but I was kind of going slow. That's alright. So skipping through this little section right here is pretty tough. But yeah, um, that actually reminds me too. One thing with skipping and jumping, how you know you, you see me doing the turn mechanic like this in the air to gain speed, landing, bouncing off the water, and all that stuff. Um, if you think of a rock skipping, and how it's spinning, you know if it's spinning right you're gonna get your rock to skip and it's gonna stay fast. Um, what I'm getting at is how you land on the water actually will determine if you keep most of your speed off that bounce. Um, without bouncing off a wave, you can't really gain speed on a bounce. So if it's just like... There are cool, there are a few cool tricks that you can do. One is through here. And actually land in the whirlpool in a fashion that you can use it to launch yourself out of. Um, but it's, it's tough to do, and I'm conservatively trying to go for it. Another one's right here. I'm missing it this time though. Um, if you bounce off that ramp correctly, you can actually bounce or stay in the air and bounce off that last ramp right there. Um, here's a spot you can try to use in the service this way. So yeah, this track's just kind of bland. It's just it's once you go through it once and it doesn't change and there's not a whole lot to it and it's just kind of slow. I don't know. But I'm glad it's almost over. Almost crashed there. So yeah, what I've, what I've really been trying to do is explain all the different mechanics and stuff that you use um, while trying to put on a, a good display of some motorboat in here, but uh, it's been kind of subpar. Um, it's really hard to be consistent in this game just because, you know, execution alone is one thing, but then you always have boats and there's always a little bit of RNG and yeah, I don't know, it's just tough, but it's fun. This track is probably a crowd favorite. Um, I'm not a huge lap track guy, just because I I want a little variety, you know. And a lot of the lap tracks here are pretty straightforward. This is no exception from that. And I missed that boost. That sucks. I gotta get this boost. Normally I ski around that ramp, and it's just faster. You just you know skiing accelerates you faster, also. Um, so if you're not going 200, 
and you start to ski, even if you don't get to 200, it'll get you to 180 or 190 faster. Um, just because of the the whole you're catching your own draft. Um, up here, I like to skip that boost and ski again, just because again it's it's faster. <laughs> you know, not to be too redundant here. But I don't know. This track, there's just not a whole lot of creative freedom, if I can say that. It's just very straightforward, you're very confined, and I don't know, I like to have a little bit of, uh, a little bit of room to, to just do stuff, I guess. But yeah. This is almost over. I gotta get this boost this time though, just cause I'm, I'm low. That actually wasn't all that bad of a time on that track. Um, it's probably, it's probably like a second away from my PB. Yeah, just about. Uh, this is actually the first track in the game, Lake Paul is. So when you fire it up, the very first track you're going to play is Lake Paul. Um, and it's kind of funny that it took so long for skiing to actually be a thing, because right here, you ski around the corner and it's like textbook ski. You know, you're accelerating from a dead start, you, you do the ski and you jump out of it. Um, but the route for a really long time was to jump around that rock, that I, or to jump over the rock that I skied around. Um, here I'm taking just a little bit of a different route, because I want to play it safe and get the boost, but you can just manage your boost better and uh, go through the left side of the dam and uh, it's just, it's faster, so. Here I'm actually going pretty fast. Kind of ruined it though, I should have just cut my mouth shut. break at first there, I was coming in too hot. Holy cow. That was a pretty good leg pal too. I'm glad I'm getting a few good tracks in too, just, you know, it's a little a little better to watch when the game plays good. <laughs> so this is the last track and it is an absolute run killer. Which sucks because it is the last track. Um, this is the third DLC track and what they did a little differently in this one compared to the other two where the waves are a little more dynamic. Um, is they made it a suicide track. So starting right here, <clears throat> you have boats flying both ways at you. There was one. And it's very... To me, it is very RNG based, just because I never know where the boats are going to be flying at me from the other direction. Um, and it's really hard to check the radar because you have to be paying attention, so just even like a split second look away in some spots can screw you up and then you're probably going to hit the, uh, the boat coming at you anyway. Yeah, this is PC and Xbox 360. The, uh, the PC version is a little different though, because what the developers did, um, it was released after the 360 version, and they started to... Uh, develop the water physics more um, and the camera's a little different and from what I understand the PC version's actually a little bit slower uh, the boats behave differently in the air I'm told I haven't really played the PC version all that much um, but this version is in my eyes how I think a boat racer should be it's uh, you know the camera's spot on everything about the game is go fast you know all the all the mechanics are there in order to go fast and 
you know, to be really fast in the game, you actually have to use all the mechanics, so it's not like you're just hitting the gas and driving and jumping and flying and stuff. There's, uh, there's quite a bit going on. Uh, it might not look at it, look like it. And I didn't really want to go this way, but that's okay. Um, but you know, I kind of talked about it and everything, so there, there's definitely a little bit going on here. Ooh, uh, I can't see. So yeah, time's coming up here. Um, there's a little S turn coming through. But uh, this is Hydro Thunder Hurricane. It was kind of a bad run, but it's all good. Time. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this marathon. And I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, there's definitely. Uh, Oh yeah, um, I'm sorry, I kind of forgot about that. But, uh, thanks guys. Again, I'm, I'm Farbzilla. Um, I'm Build a Butcher on Xbox Live, so if you're looking at leaderboards and all that stuff, you'll you'll see me on there. And that's actually not too bad of a time. Um, you know, again, it is game time that, uh, that is taken into account, but I wasn't really keeping track. I was trying to just focus on playing, but again, Thanks for letting me do this, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all she wrote for me. <laughs>